amount of land that you're going to be using after the changes that you could use 24, you could make as many as 24 units at uh, R10? That's what I was comparing to. It'll say if it was R10, we could put in a public road, which it would have to be to be able to subdivide property off either side of that road. Right. So that road's going to take up about an acre. It's 800 feet long, I said 60 foot wide. You have to put a road in. You have to put a road in R10. Because in R10, you have to subdivide individual lots. Okay. At 10,000 square foot lots. And so that would, you could potentially do 24 lots. And what's being proposed is three less than that at 21. 21 And that would not necessitate a road being cut through. We would have to have a, it would still remain all one parcel. We wouldn't have a public street because it's a. Right. It's so a, you'd actually potentially, and I'm just thinking spatial and. You know, if you reduce it 21 and you don't have to have a road, you're actually going to have potentially more green space than you would with actual uh, R10s and 24 units. Right. You follow me on that? Yes, yeah, because we'll be, actually we'll be grouping the houses closer together and leaving more green space between right between units. Okay. Well, then that's okay. That's do, you, do you have that layout already? <clears throat> I do. I only brought one copy, so, uh, and it's not that big. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm going to pass around the yeah. But it's my understanding, our job is not to approve a rendering or a number of buildings. We're just here on the zoning issue, right? Correct. And, you know, this is not, when we rezone a property, unless it's a conditional use permit, which is, it does not fall under a conditional use permit, we're just rezoning. This is, it's not going to be site plan, but specific so it's not going to be tied to this layout but this is currently what the developer is, is considering. Do your responsibilities as part of the, you said you're an engineer? Yes. Um, does that include water and sewer? Yes. And the 21 buildings with double, double occupancy in each building mm -hmm. um, that still falls within standards for what's available for that property now? Correct. There's currently there's two there's two manholes near that curve. One feeds uh, a um, public lift station that I understand from the air public works is uh, almost at, at limit and then there's a gravity manhole. We have not been released at this point yet to do a uh, field run topo to know exactly what the elevations are. But the intent is to tie tie into the uh, yeah, topographic survey okay. to know what the elevations are. The if the gravity manhole is deep enough, we can tie into the gravity manhole, and we won't add any more sewer to the existing lift station that's out there. You said you had already the existing lift station that's out there is almost at capacity. What did you say about that? Yeah, my understanding from uh, Donnie is that. Um, Due to the development out there, that that lift station, if we can keep as much load off of that lift station, it would help that lift station out. So our intent is to keep as much load off of it as possible. What if the gravity is not an option? If the gravity is not an option, we'll have to go through the calcs, and um, Donnie can provide us with the current lift station, the flow going to the lift station, and we'll have to make sure that we're not exceeding the capacity that that lift station can handle. And that would go. That would be part of the engineering review process. When we submit plans, the Stevenson and Palmer would be reviewing our plans, and they would have to verify that we're not exceeding the capacity of that list station. So there, there's measures in place to keep us or keep anybody from building something that there's not current capacity. So we would have the option then of either increasing the capacity of that list station at our expense, or reducing the number of units, or finding another way to provide sewer. Is, the high, is that a hindsight 2020 situation, or, how, or, or I guess there's a, that's just a numbers game? I mean, can, can you make that determination now? Or? If I can interject here for just a second, uh, from a capacity standpoint, systematically, the city of Hayhara has available capacity for new development. Um, sewage is not a question as far as residential or commercial development is concerned. There may be some site-specific things that need to be taken care of from an engineering standpoint, but from the system as a whole, capacity is there. So I'll just interject that. I'm trying to be careful how I say this. We can do a lot of things, but I, 
I don't work for, for free. So the developers at this time, if the rezoning doesn't go through, they're, you know, they're not going to design the whole thing if, if the zoning is not not uh, not going to go through. Right. I, just, I, I wanted to avoid the situation where we build a bunch of uh, or do we agree to the zoning duplexes are built and suddenly sewage is acting. Above right. capacity. So this is just a rezoning, you know, we have to go through the whole design process once it's rezoned and so there is a potential we get it rezoned and, you know, we run into that but I feel confident we can find a way to address the sewer once that comes up. And but you're, you're not, you're not it's by approving the zoning, you're not saying you're good to go build this many units on this piece of property. You're just approving the zoning that would allow this. There's a lot of other measures and reviews that have to go through beyond this mm -hmm. to ensure that we're not negatively impacting the city infrastructure. Well, that's reassuring. Just a question, just to clear my mind up. So we're saying that that what we're trying to do now is rezone this from R6 to R10. I mean, from, yes. From R10, R10. From R10 to R6. R6, correct. Yes. Okay, now, are we saying that that uh, the project depends on a rezoning? Are we saying that, that, that this project couldn't go through at an R10? Tracy's going to have to help me out on this. I don't believe a duplex is allowed under R10. Is that correct, Tracy? Let me take my use table real quick. Not to mention it. Duplexes are allowed to the special exception in R10, not allowed in R15. They are allowed by right in R6. In R6. Okay. So I think when, when we initially met the the R six M made more sense than trying to go through to get the special exception within R ten. Both of them would have required public hearings, both of them would have required a vote from the city council. Would that would that generally would that generally come uh, that special exception, would that generally come uh, with the presentation of the project after it has been engineered? My interpretation is that a special exception is similar to about off the conditional years. It's, in, it's individually looking at each individual situation, saying, here's the situation for what we're proposing to get. Chances are they're not going to do fully engineered drawings for a special exception. They would wait and do that if the special exception went through and was approved and when they submitted it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No, that's I have uh, one more quick question. What is the maximum number of duplex? If the rezoning were to R6, what's the maximum number of duplexes or buildings that could have fit on that property? And I think when we initially did the, that initial layout, I believe the maximum number of buildings we could fit was, was it 30? Yeah, it you could potentially fit 10 units per acre. So 67 units would have been the max, but just when we did the layout and to meet the green space requirement, the max we could have fit was 60. Six, 30, 30, 30 buildings. Okay. This particular rent, uh, drawing that you have, you mentioned that you, the plan has been reduced from 30 to 21. Mm -hmm. This one has 23. Is, is there section on here that's not going to be included. There's no reason this drawing here, this is a revised drawing. Right. Okay. From there's, the 23 third, on there? there's 21 on here. There's 21 on there. Both 23. How many on this? Either 21 or 23. 
probably 22. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> Wait a minute, there's one off. Yeah, some of them aren't. No, you're right. Okay. Good. I didn't learn how to count. Go to ten. <laughs> you don't know how to count. I'm just laughing. That's 21. You're up to your breath. I have been known to make a mistake from time to time. Who's responsible for the street on R10, like the dead end street? Who would have to build that? If if it was if it was developed as R10 and subdivided in. 10,000 square foot lots that would have to be dedicated to the city, and the city would then be responsible for maintaining that street. Okay. Right. If it's developed as we're currently proposing, it would remain private and be the responsibility of the, the landowner to maintain the infrastructure. One quick question is, I know we got R and N zoning in there for the houses. What's the trailer bar zone? R C N. R C Okay, what is the storage buildings zone as? Storage buildings. Where are the storage buildings at? Right next to the mobile home park. M one. Yeah, well, so what you've got, you've got three different zonings. If I'm looking at the rock hmm. you have three different zonings in one area on one street so far. You've got R6M, which is Gateway High. Right. You've got R10, you've got the MHC, and then you've got further to the east, M1. So you have four. Mm -hmm. Gateway Pines is what? R6 Genomics. Right across the street on the south side of Stanfield, which would be directly south of this particular project, what is that? R10. Is it R10? Yes, sir. Talking about on the south side? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, all of Mr. Coleman, well, I say all of it, about half of it is R10 for Mr. Coleman, and then he's got CH on the front half, the front half next to 